All right, in this video for people with no computer repair experience, I will show you how to replace a laptop battery. This is a seven year old laptop that still works perfectly well. The battery just no longer holds a charge. So I bought a new one and I'm going to go through the process of replacing it. The first thing you're going to need to do in order to do that is figure out what battery you need. And to do that, you're gonna need your laptop's model numbers. So if you flip these over, there is a sticker on the back with all sorts of stuff on it. Interestingly, when I bought this, I checked back at the email confirmation I had. This is a Dell Inspiron 13-i7370, but it doesn't actually say those numbers anywhere on the tag here. If I can get this to focus, it doesn't want to cooperate at the moment, but there's a service tag, an express service code, and then regular model P83G. When I initially went around to Google search using those things like the service tag, which I think is supposed to help you find parts for a specific computer, like nothing actually turned up. I don't know if it's because this computer is too old, but it was listed under the 13-73070 where I finally actually found the battery that was compatible with this laptop. So I saw a pretty big range of prices. There was something on Amazon for as low as $25, which seemed a little suspicious when everything else was kind of in the $60, $70, $80 range. So even though it claimed it was compatible, I didn't really want to gamble on the quality of a $25 battery. So I went with something, again, I think was $70 or $80 bucks from what is hopefully a more reputable repair company that kind of sells these aftermarket or third-party parts because I could not find the original uh, Dell batteries directly from Dell at this point, again, since this laptop is seven years old. So again, sorry that was a bunch, but you can't fix it or repair it until you actually have the right batteries. So you're going to need to do the legwork to search for that yourself, assuming you don't have the exact same model I do here. The next thing you're going to do is take off the bottom. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit here. Take off the bottom part of the case. So you just need a little Phillips head screwdriver to do that. You can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws in my case. Again, that might be different for your laptop. I'm not going to film myself taking all of these off. A magnetic screwdriver helps to lift them. Just a little eyeglass screw set. Set these aside somewhere. Make sure you don't lose them take all those screws out and then we are going to carefully take off the bottom case. Before we take off the bottom part of the case, I should mention you don't want to have any static damage to the inside of your computer, so you want to discharge yourself, touch a large metal object or something, and make sure you're not shuffling around on a carpeted floor on socks to build up a lot of static because you don't want to damage the inside of your computer. So I've got all the screws out. They're all the same size. You don't really have to worry about sorting them. The next step is to actually get this back cover off. And this is something that always bugs me with the other repair videos I've seen online. They all make this look easy, but that thing is on there really good. You see that even though I've removed the screws, just kind of gripping the edges with your fingernail and starting to pull doesn't really get it started. So I have a very tiny flathead screwdriver that I'm going to use there. And I'll see if I can change the lens and get this to focus. So I've zoomed in a bit here, so hopefully you can see that lip or that edge a little bit better where there's the difference between the bottom and then the actual top surface that has the keyboard on it. And you can see how that does move now that the screws are off. But I'm really going to want to kind of carefully work my way around the edge because see the moment I released there, it popped right back down. So again, the other videos I have seen online make this look like a piece of cake. Looks like maybe I've got a bit of a more of a gap on the front here. So maybe that would be a better place to start. So again, I probably won't film the whole process. I at least wanted to show you getting it started. And if it's actually possible to do this without breaking anything. So if you're watching, oh, there we go. I kind of felt a tab actually pop there. And I apologize. I just realized the camera was out of focus. Okay, so I saw a bit more of a gap on the edge. And then once I got that started, you see it's coming off. A lot more nicely but again some videos just kind of breeze through that part and make it look easy and don't give you any tips so if you're having trouble getting it started and don't want to break your fingernails or something very very carefully use a flat little screwdriver or the edge of a knife or something to get it started and then the whole thing is going to pry off nicely exposing the inside and the battery 
Okay, now that we got that cover off, it looks like there are four additional screws holding the battery down. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those four screws. These are took a little more force to get started there than the ones for the case. I'm going to use my magnetic screwdriver, and you can see how these are shorter, so you don't want to get these mixed up with the screws that were holding the outside of the case on. Keep those separate. And these are on there pretty tight, so it's taking a little more force to get them started with the tiny little screwdriver I have here. One, two, three. And the fourth one is over here. I apologize, the camera's going out of focus as I'm getting my arms in the way there. Okay, get that fourth one out. All four screws are out, and then there's this little cable here connecting the battery to the motherboard. So you see BTY and MB. This has a little sticker over it, probably for Dell to indicate that this was the original part and hasn't been tampered with or anything. So, well, interestingly, there's also this little red and black cable threaded along the back into those clips on the battery so I wanted to be careful not to yank that out or I probably would have broken that cable there. Now I can lift the whole battery up and see I'm going to need to get this connector here out. So I am going to actually grab, see if I can just peel that sticker off. And you can see on the new battery where that connector is going to plug into right here. So I need to get this sticker off. And there we go. That's exposing the connector, which kind of came right out as I yanked on it just with the tape there. So there's my old battery. I'm going to remove that. And this is the part where I find out if I purchased the correct battery that is actually compatible with this laptop. That plug should fit right in there. And then it should fit, there we go, into place and line up with all of the same screws, which it looks like it does. So there we go, just replace that cable, and I'm going to put those four screws back in. I won't record this whole part, you don't have to watch me do all of that, just putting them back in where I took them out before. So again, I'm going to stop recording now rather than making you watch me do all four screws. Another quick note, I am going to route this cable back through those clips again. I don't want that to get stuck or torn when I am putting the case back on. So it kind of loops through these clips above and below them here to clip into place so then it's nice and snug up against the battery and isn't going to be loose or get snagged on anything when I put the case back on. So I made sure all four of my screws are nice and tight. And now I am go good to go ahead and line the outside of the case up again. Make sure that snaps into place nice and snug. And then I have my 10 screws from earlier that I'm going to put back in one at a time. And again, I'm not gonna film that whole process. So I'll just show getting the first one started here. And then I'm going to go around and do the other nine. All right, the case is back on and we are good to go. Two more notes. Make sure you do not just dispose of this battery in the regular trash. Check your local guidelines for how to dispose of rechargeable lithium batteries. You can see this one was actually noticeably swollen, so not in great condition and potentially a fire hazard. So again, you don't want to just go chuck that in the trash. To check the instructions that came with your new battery, mine contains instructions for how to calibrate your laptop's charge sensor to the new battery, so charge to 100%, keep it charging for at least two hours, use the laptop until it shuts off from low battery, and charge back uninterrupted to 100%, but again, check the instructions that came with your battery to do that. So, there you go. Again, I am definitely not a computer repair expert, so if you think I did something wrong, or have a helpful tip or comment, go ahead and let us know below this video. And if there's anything particularly useful, I will pin the comment. Thanks for watching.